Strategies for Healthy Living. My name is Taylor Williams and I'm a first year student here at Monmouth University studying speech language pathology in the 3 plus 2 program. So today I'm going to be doing a video about mental health and along with my other friend Jeff and Erin of course and we're just going to take a deep little road trip talking about how it affects people resources on campus and all that jazz. So let's get into it. I'm here with my housemate. What's your name? Jeffa. Well, wow. Do you struggle with mental health? Sometimes. <laughs> How do you cope with it? Um, I take mental health days. Hi, I'm here with uh, one of my friends. Hi, I'm Shannon. And what are some ways you uh, like to improve your mental health? Um, I like to improve my mental health by like keeping a nice, clean living area and sticking to a, a good daily routine. And um, are there any ways you could improve someone else's mental health? Maybe one of your friends or anyone you know? Um, just by like being a good, supportive friend and making sure you're always there for everyone, especially when they're going through a rough time. All right, thank you very much, Shannon. I'm here with... Michelle, and today I'm asking her, why is it important to take care of your mental health? Um, it's important to take care of your mental health so you're an overall better person, better student, and then you don't fall into any like substance abuse or like drugs or anything. Hi, I'm here with my friend. Hi, I'm Lindsay. And what are some ways you like to improve your mental health? I like to improve my mental health by walking my dog and listening to music. And what are some ways that you think you could help others improve their mental health? I think I can help others improve their mental health by just having like a simple conversation with them. I'm here with my housemate. Tell us your name. Angie. Angie, how would you help someone struggling with their mental health? I would try to talk to them so then they wouldn't feel alone. And if it was like really, really bad and I was worried about them, I would suggest counseling. I'm here with my friend Layla. Uh, Layla, what do you like to do to improve your mental health? Um, I like to go to the beach often and also I enjoy reading. And what are some ways you could help others improve their mental health? Uh, I think I could try to be a positive person around other people and, you know, check in on them, see if they're okay. Before I go into any detail, I just want to put a quick trigger warning because we are going to be talking about something that's a little sensitive for other people. And that has to be Suicide Prevention Month and the mention of suicide. So if you are sensitive to that topic, I totally understand. And um, I advise that you either, you know, buckle up or um, this can be a video we can bypass. So yeah, just to let you know, um, September is well known as Suicide Prevention Month, which is a very special month for many people and a very important month to bring awareness to, unfortunately, something we call suicide, which is one person who takes their own life. Hi. When it comes to mental health, there are many ways for you to support your feelings of depression and anxiety, or both. The first hotline that I'd like to talk about is the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. That number is 1-800-273-8255. This number is going to change to a short three-digit number on July 16th, 2022. That number will just be 988, and that will reroute you to the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. The second number that I want to talk about is the Mental Health Hotline. Whether you are looking for help yourself or worried about someone else or anything, you could dial the number 211. This will route you to someone who will help you with your mental health. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about something else, which is counseling and prevention services here at Monmouth. So where to find that is in the Rebecca Stafford Student Center, right like diagonal from the School of Sciences, kind of straight ahead, um, like behind the Great Hall. But if you're standing, like after the tunnel, you're at the tunnel, right? You just come out. 
and then you see the Great Hall Head, you're gonna make right and you should see the Student Center. And um, there's like three floors, I think, and you go to the elevator and you know, you go do 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 do. And on the third floor, you will find CPS. Literally, you come out of the elevator and it's a very calm and relaxing, you know, study area actually as well. I frequent there often to study and um, also seek help, which is nothing to be ashamed about. And also, let me make this clear. CPS is free treatment. I believe we get eight visits per year. And I highly advise anybody going, whoever's going through hard things and struggling, it's totally helpful. Even I was uneasy about it to begin with, but I totally advise it after going. They're such sweet people, there's so many resources, and seeking help is not as bad or should be shameful as people make it. So, yeah, and not to mention CPS, it's not Child Protective Services, it's just Counseling and Prevention Services to help anybody who needs to talk, vent, or they may have a crisis, and that's what they're here for, they're here to help you. Also, you can schedule appointments or you can walk in, but to schedule appointments, you should use the number 732-571-7517. And basically the services given is like individual counseling, crisis intervention, mental health education, substance use counseling, suicide prevention trainings, wellness initiatives, campus outreach, critical consultations, supports for students in recovery, and 24-hour emergency resources and support. Most topics usually talk about are a bit, tip, a bit, you know, typical. Some aren't so typical, which is the best reason to go to CPS if you ever need anything, because everything that you talk about is valid. You will always be validated, you will always be listened to, and they are truly there just to help you thrive which is really awesome. So um, in the next clip, you're gonna see my friend Erin walk over to the student center after coming out of the Great Hall and out of the tunnel. And we'll just take a little adventure up there and we'll see where that leads us. So nice talking to you. Okay, so now that we've seen the student center and we talked to some very amazing people, I just wanted to get into something that my friends and I created and we were just cur very curious about for our like freshmen and dealing with mental health with all the changes going around on campus and you know, all that jazz. So we made a survey just to get an insight. So, of course, the first question was male or female, uh, or non-binary, or rather not say, and we got our responses for that. And our second question was, do you struggle with mental health? 22% of our freshmen that answered said that they struggle with mental health very often, and 33% said sometimes, 33% said rarely, and then 11% said not at all. So what I'm getting is a strong consensus that people still do struggle with mental health. So that's very, very high. And it's a lot of changes going on, which is totally normal. And that's what CPS is for. Our second question, no, this would be our third, it's my bad. Um, our third question was, do you feel like there are many resources to help better your mental health on campus? And of course we said yes. 
no, I have not explored those options or we didn't know about those. 22% of our freshmen said that they did not know about those resources or where they were located, which is a huge percentage. But another um, understandable one is that people have not explored those resources. And that was at 66% of our freshmen, which is totally understandable. Seeking out for help is very hard, but at the same time, they may not know where it is. And that's what we're here to do this video for. Speaking of the word for, I am on question for now. And basically we were just curious if they're comfortable with sharing, what do you struggle with in reference to your mental health? Check all that apply. So we did a general consensus. We all know that many people struggle with a lot of different things and it's hard to pinpoint every single um, thing that people struggle with involving their mental health. So generalization, we did depression, anxiety, social anxiety, rather not say, or other. 11% of our freshmen um, that we did a consensus on have depression. And a big one that really stuck out to my um, group mates and I was that 50% of our student body suffers with anxiety. And 27% struggle with social anxiety. And 27% rather not say. And another 20% say other, which is totally understandable no pressure to answer any questions but the fact that 50 percent struggle with mental health is very concerning and well mental health involving anxiety that's very huge so it wouldn't hurt to go see cps there's a lot of changes going on we have college workload just a change in environment being on our own making our own schedule like it's all coming in full circle all at once. So it's totally okay to not be okay. And of course, our fifth question was, do you feel comfortable to utilize the resources given by Mameth if needed? So we did three responses, which was yes, of course, no, or I'm uneasy about it. 27% of our respondents said yes, that they feel comfortable. 16% said no, and unfortunately, 55.56% of our respondents said that they are uneasy about it, which is totally understandable, but what I can consistently reassure people of is that going to CPS does not mean you should be shamed for asking for help or seeking help. It should be something that you should be very proud of and that you're very brave for doing that. And it's very, very slay, as I like to say. And um, being uneasy about things can be hard and making decisions is definitely hard, especially when it comes to focusing on yourself, which a lot of us sometimes forget to do. So um, yeah, and I believe this is our final question, number six was, do you even know where the counseling and prevention services is located on campus and the resourceful number? 66.67% of our freshmen that we interviewed um, and surveyed said no. While it might not be easy, there are many ways to improve and tackle mental health. The first way that I will be discussing to improve your mental health is by getting a cup of coffee in the morning. This has been shown by many studies that it can actually improve your day and improve your mental health in general. Another way to improve your mental health is to work on your strengths. Do things that you are good at to help build your self-confidence. Another way to improve your mental health is by experimenting. Doing new things might actually help your mental health a lot more than you think because it will allow you to realize things that you may enjoy that you haven't in the past. Another way to improve mental health is by showing someone in your life that you truly care about them. Telling them that you love them might actually make you a lot more happy and improve your mental health along with their mental health. Another and one of the most important things in my opinion is taking time to laugh. Taking time to laugh is very crucial to mental health 
as laughing and doing things that you enjoy can make you feel a lot better if you're feeling anxious or have feelings of anxiety.